everybody, this is Matthew from Catholics on Record, and it's good to see you all again. Um, just know that I am praying for everybody on here on this channel that subscribes and all your family and friend, friends. I am praying for you all. Let's get started. So, what's been going on lately? Um, a lot of things with prayer and Lent. Lent has been a crazy time. Um, yeah, Lent, Lent has been hard this year. You know, trying to figure out what I need to do. If I need to continue on with this channel. Stuff like that. Um, but I think I'm going to continue on with this channel. It's good therapeutic. Good and therapeutic for me, I think. To talk about things that are important in the Catholic faith. Um, one thing that's been on my mind when I was doing adoration is the fact that you know, as parents, you know, for all the parents out there and people discerning parenthood, we should, when we take our kids to church, just keep a few things in mind. The younger they are, the more they're not going to pay attention as much. So we need to kind of work with that and not pressure them to, you know, you must do this at this time. You know, we can't be too rigid. But, you know, we need to be charitable too and tell them the truth, you know. Like the other day, um, before the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, I felt inspired to take my son on the way of the cross. And we have way, the way of the cross starting from the choir side to all the way over to the Statue of Mary. It goes around the whole church. It's a, big, it's a pretty big church building. Sanctuary area. Yeah, it's a pretty big sanctuary, I would say. Um, but I took, took my son there. You know, going by each station, you sing them. I say my private prayer and then I say Jesus died for you here in this passion. You know, just just stuff like that. And they may not get it at first, but the seed is planted and that's all you do at the point of the time you're doing that. And so you know, you plant the seed and then they it grows. It grows to this big mustard tree and it's just beautiful to watch. Um Another thing, point I would point out, if you see your kid um, liking something in the faith, talk to them about it, you know, no matter how young they are, at their level, of course, but talk to them about it, just to see where they're at, you know? Like if they like, for example, my son likes John of the Cross, you know, talk to him about him and explain to them about it, you know? You can do that, so. Another thing have a sacramentalized life so include your children in the sacraments have weekly times you go to confession with them as a family you know they can't go to confession or have like three or four or five years old yet ordinarily but you know um yeah just bring them to confession with you you know have one parent watch the child while the other parent goes to confession and then swap it out and then have it call all everybody together praying and then go home after a few minutes of adoration together, a few minutes, a few minutes of private prayer, and that's that's just typical stuff. Sunday, holy days of obligation, certain feast days that are important in your family, go to those. Um, speaking of private prayer, you need to te teach a child, as I heard in one sentence, this fidelium. Shout out to them. No copyright infringement. <laughs> I don't know what you're supposed to say, but anyway, shout out to census fidelium on this. Um, there's a priest in his homily. He was talking about um, teaching children how to have a private prayer time. You know, you do family rosary, and that's good, and family prayer. But you need to teach your child they can pray on their own. Because as the, priest, the, the good father said in the video, if you don't teach your children how, basically, if you don't teach your children how to pray by themselves, they, they'll stop praying. They won't pray at all when they leave. You know, they do you do the family rosary as a family they need to have individual time with the rosary or read the bible or you know and that's another thing going from the church world you know you need to have a church life at home too it's kind of a short end of that um kind of the, this is something i've done with my son um when you're doing something you don't have to involve them in every little thing you do let them do their own thing. Like my son likes to read on by himself. He just sits there for a good, I don't know, if you give him a stack of books, 30 minutes, 
and he'll read and then he'll get bored after a few minutes and come back to it. But it, it's substantial on and off for 30 minutes. So, yeah, I mean, just give them time by themselves and that will evolve into prayer time. Um, teach them a, a trade or a skill that you like. Something you, lo- you like is if they see you doing something you like, then they'll want to do it. It's just natural tendency of children and parents. The child will want to do what the parent wants to do. It's another thing. Um, another tip would be to get substantial books in your house. Uh, I wish I could show you the bookcase we have, but like I mean, like not like flimsy magazines, but like books of this substantial quality and read them. Let your child see you reading them, and he'll want to read. He or she will want to read them too. You know, they may just flip through the pages. Or just look at the words and stuff for a little bit, but it's, like I said, seeds planted, you know. Um, another thing, um, television is not exactly the best thing to have in your house, especially if it takes up the place where the crucifix should be. Because I've seen a lot of places, and I've been to a lot of homes in my time in EMS and my time doing the furniture s- stuff and with my job. TV was the center of the house. There were no books anywhere. There was no crucifix where the TV should be. TV was the idol of the house. So it's not good to have that. as like you're, Because TV can turn into an idol. You know, you're all gathered around that. You're basically worshipping the television program. I know that's going to be an unpopular opinion in, my, in the comments section, but that's too bad. Um, yeah, and healthy diet too. You know, a healthy, nutritious diet with the children feeding them the right things, you know. I mean, we're not all perfect. We're going to make mistakes. But it's important to at least try, you know. And it's a prayer, reading, um, rosary, what else? And then just teach them small devotions too, like small little devotions. Like if you see something grow on that, like if they like the Angelus, then don't teach them about, about the Angelus. They like St. Joseph, teach them how to have a devotion to St. Joseph. It's just all these important things, like a wholesome, holistic approach to spirituality instead of like, oh, we got to do a prayer, and that's all we're doing during the day, and like you can't do anything else. You can't play ball. You can't go outside and play with your toys. No, I mean, they're going to have to play. Another thing, playtime is important because they learn through playtime and healthy playtime too. So, I mean, not too many toys, I would say. I mean, if toys gather up, um. Toys are a good way to teach charity. You know, if you have an old toy that they don't want them to have anymore, teach them to give it away to another child in need, you know, or just have them leave the toy at the park. Just leave it there, and they'll be for some child to, you know, I don't know, pick up and play with, and then that made the child's day, you know. Because children do that all the time. They see toys at the park, they'll pick it up, and then they will play with it, take it home, and then it'll be their toy forever for the next few years. Those are just some good tips, I would say. Um, but yeah, that's what's been going on. And just ruminate. I've been ruminating over that in my head, like different things dealing with um, family life. You know, on the point of marriage, you know, marriage isn't easy. That's like the most obvious statement of the century. Like, who said marriage was easy when you get into it, you know? But make make marriage worth it, you know. Get each other to heaven. You know, I should do another video on that. Um, yeah, I mean, just because you wear the ring doesn't mean your marriage is good, you know. This could be all for show, but you know it's all in here, in your soul, that in your heart, that matters too. But yeah, I'll do a separate video on that. And yeah, since it's late, I'm going to call it a night, and I will see you guys another day. Bye for now.